Sure. It goes up just as much as mine. There's just less feedback, it looks like. Do you have a dice? You don't. I do. I have a special one. Oh, right. I have a cool one. Cool. It's hey. a dice within a dice. Whoa, double dice. Yeah. Everybody, it's the program. Here we are on TV. Again. Once again. Yeah, it's Monday. Did we start already? Yep. Holy the n crap. The it started. Shit. Hey, well, I guess uh, this is the hour where we start talking, and we talk nonstop for one hour until your ears start to bleed. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> happens, uh, if maybe. If it does happen, then maybe you have a problem. You should call the doctor. Or us. Yeah, call us. If your ears start to bleed, call us. We know why. <laughs> call the doctor first, call, then call us. Call us always. If you ever call, want to call 911. If you're yeah. the, call us first. Call the number. It's 3335363. We'll help you out in your situation. Call us. Call us. Leave a message there. Yeah. Tell us your emergency and we'll get to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so if like you start feeling sick, you feel like a pain in your chest. Yeah. Call this number right here. 0536302. Also call 911. Call <laughs> Afterwards, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Call, call us and leave a message first. Tell us all about it so there's like a record. Yeah, so this is Monday. Sort of. um, Dan's here on Mondays, or I, I guess we, I go to him here. Yeah, it's really nice of you. We're back. Hopefully, uh, next Monday I'll have a car working. Uh, I have, I'm have. i going to have a mechanic look at the one I'm looking at. I'm going to buy it for 100 bucks, roughly. Oh, well, yeah, that's a good deal. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a good deal. Even if it only runs for a couple months, it's good for 100 bucks. Sure, yeah, but I gotta pay the, the tabs and license and all that shit, and that's gonna be another 100, 150 probably. And I'm gonna switch my insurance over, and because it's a newer car, slightly newer, uh, the one that I had was an 88, this is a 98. 10 years, that's a more than slightly, I would say. Yeah, it has 100,000 fewer miles on it. Wow, but it's messed up, but it's, just, it's not as messed up as the other car was. The other car stopped running, right? Um, yeah, the third cylinder. Um, valve was bent and so it would slam into the uh, spark plug every time and it was uh, screwing up the spark plug so uh, I can't I can't drive the car on three cylinders I mean it could but then it would just damage everything it would <coughs> it would wear out the other cylinders and then it would die somewhere in the middle of the road and and uh, I'd rather have it sitting in my parking lot yeah, uh, actually, I'm probably going to see if I can send it to the scrapyard, and I'll probably get a couple hundred bucks for it. So, so because they'll they'll part it out, they'll get as they'll get rid of as many parts as they can first, anything usable, and uh, um, and then it will be crunched and munched and chipped and and ripped and slapped and fapped and everything. So, whatever, you know, uh, you know, I feel bad because it has a lot of sentimental value, but uh, what the hell are you going to do, you know? You hours and hours in that thing. I did, I did. Car. Yeah, well, I learned a lot. I learned a great deal. I mean, I'm not a mechanic, but uh, uh, I'm willing to go in and see what I can do myself. And if I have the tools and I'm not being rained on and the light is good and I have the time, yeah. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. How sure. long did you drive that car? Um... Shree and I got it uh, in 2003, 2004. Well, a 10-year ten ten year car almost, huh? Yeah, yeah, eight years. I've been driving it around myself for almost four. So we got it three or four years, yeah, four years, uh, oh. before she uh, passed away. So so it's kind of hard because it's kind of sort of part of her. So well, losing. Was, it, was it her car? She, she Yeah, she bought and paid for it. And uh, I helped out. I chipped in, you know, with gas and insurance and and uh, uh, repairs and maintenance and stuff. But uh, yeah, she she had the money, so she did it herself. All right. Well, I, and uh, I, I played a supportive role in that. You could. I want to get a car <coughs> and then put it. And I, I know you don't have a, a house. I mean, like I put a garage, put it in. But I always mm -hmm. wanted to put a car and use that as like a piece of furniture. And just sit in it, you know? You can just hang out in your car. You're not going anywhere. Just sit, sit in it. Just put it in your living room. <laughs> put, you, put it in front of your TV. Sit in the car. 
<laughs> it's like a dr- like you're in a movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> or a driving theater. Kenny, you're crazy. Fun <laughs> 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 time? Um, no. <laughs> um, you'd have to open and close the door every time you got in. No, I mean, that that <laughs> well, <laughs> it might be fun for some people, but for me, it would be a pain in the ass. You know, because the door wouldn't be fully closed because I'm too lazy to close it all the way, and you got the bing, bing, bing. Well, it wouldn't be plugged in. Door's ajar. Door's ajar. Door's ajar. But wouldn't that smell? Wouldn't that smell like rubber tires and and uh, tran- transaxle fluid? And yeah, well, you take out the engine and stuff, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. So it would be just like an empty, an empty hu- husk of a car. Yeah, there's been the seats, pretty much, and the, s- and the stereo, maybe. You're plugging the stereo to the wall. You know, I kind of think a van would be better, wouldn't it? You'd have more room. You could you could put stuff in the van. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, come sit in my van. You know, you put that little fuzzy dice, and actually, actually, you could have, you could, you could carpet the inside of the van in the back, you know, and maybe have a, you know, little disco light or something oh, maybe shag and wagon fuzzy, fuzzy dice yeah shag carpet definitely well, wait wait in the last week god oh my god my this last week for me has credulous <laughs> unbelievable unbelievable yeah 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 so uh here's the first funny thing is uh I went to a conference. I left Thursday afternoon, uh, like four-ish or something. And uh, the last thing I posted on Facebook was that I was taking a Facebook vacation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a bunch of texts and phone calls on my cell phone. Dad, are you okay? Right? Because I post on Facebook every 46 minutes. Well, all the time? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but I post a lot on Facebook. I'm, I'm always, you know, I'm posting the googly eye photos and, and uh, um, just d- links to science know. stuff. On and the Yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to say, hey, everyone, I'm leaving my apartment for three days. You just go right ahead and rob it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got to be careful. People don't realize that when they say, okay, I'm off to work now. And if there is a nefarious person that is a friend of a friend or something like that that knows where you live and they know you're gone, you're just, you're just telling them stuff. So it's just not a good idea. Uh, on Facebook, you shouldn't put your birth date and um, the year you were born. Steal your identity. Yep. Yeah. Well, they need more than that to steal your identity. They would need like a driver's license number, social security number and stuff. But it's it's... It's a, it's, it's something that, that people should not have both on. Having your birthday is fine, but uh, uh, putting your birth year, that's uh, just gives a little too much information, and, and you know, it's not necessary. So don't do it. So I don't. Yeah. So people were worried about you, but what happened? You went to the yeah. Well, yeah. I went to a conference. It was a, a media conference for public access stations, a whole bunch of them, and it was a regional one. Uh, um, let's see, Oregon, Washington, oh, oh, Idaho, Idaho Alaska, uh, BC, wow. and Alberta. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it was a, uh, a regional conference and there were a whole bunch of people. You some fries on sure. Some hey, I can eat those. Yeah, you can those off. yeah did you uh, take classes or learn stuff or what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was really great. Um, the first, the first day on Friday, because we left Thursday and got there, we were there for early Friday morning, because we didn't want to get up at five in the morning just to drive all the way to Portland. And <coughs> so we were there Thursday night, and we went to the Edgefield, um, which is the premier McMinimans hotel, restaurant, uh, bars, winery, distillery. Uh, they make beer there. They make beer, wine and they distill stuff. And so wow. they have all kinds of alcohol. And on the premises, there are like six or seven restaurants and there are seven bars. Oh, that's in Portland? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's um, uh, not in Port- 
Portland per se. It's outside of Portland, um, like near Gresham, yeah. something like that. Hey, it's oh, it's okay. You want me to get that? Yeah, special dice. Yeah, special dice. Okay. So viewers, you guys can go out and find a pen. I got a pen here. The number on your hand. That's the number between one and six. We're gonna get the dice out. So go get your dice and guess your number, and then see if you can win the game. Whoa! There's a dice inside the dice. What do you do with it? Well, here's the way it works: is you've got yeah, yeah to the thing. Yeah. So it's a dice and a dice. And the idea is that can be two dice or that can be a dice against the other dice. So which one are we going to use? Which one are we going to do? The inside or outside dice? Which Up to you. Else? Up to you. I'm going to write a number down on my hand. Alright. Man, this dice is kind of confusing. What if I only want to roll one? Where'd you get this thing? This is wild. Some wild dice here. I got it at Wind Up Here, downtown. They have a whole bunch of them, different colors. Well, here it goes. You have your number? Yeah, I got my number. It's a three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, me too. I have a three, too. Did you pick three? I did. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. One, three, three. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> we're winners. We are winners. That happens sometimes. We both pick the same number. Now we're going to be trying to win. Yeah, I try not to pick three every time, but I really like the number. Because it's magical and shit. Mm. So Maybe. we're winners now. That's good. That usually mm -hmm. nobody wins, but today we both won. It's yeah. Losers though. Sometimes winning is fun when there's a loser, but it's we still win. Yeah, winning is good. So what did you see at that conference? You wanted to so, like so I was there. F uh, no, no, no. I uh, I was there Friday and Saturday. Friday was uh, a general meeting for the most part. It was a big meeting of everyone that was there. Uh, we got a free lunch. Which was really nice. It was a uh, oh tortillas and tacos and stuff to go on burritos and tacos bar? and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pretty good. Um, and uh, talked about kind of like what's going on with public access right now and and uh, how bad things are generally. Um, there's a thing in public access called statewide franchising, and essentially the way it works right now is that every city and every county deals separately and has a separate contract with um, the local cable company, whichever it is, if it's Comcast or, or something else. Mm -hmm. And so they, they sign up a contract that's good for five years <coughs> or 10 years. And essentially it, it says that uh, part of Comcast fees uh, for using the right of way access for bearing their cable Part of those fees go to the public access, go to, uh, in this case, TCTV. Yeah. Statewide franchising means that all of that money goes to the state, and then the state divvies it out to someone. And typically what that means in California and Idaho and a whole bunch of other southern states, they've been doing this, is it kills public access. Oh, no. The whole state. They end up just killing them. Yeah. They go away. Yeah. Yeah, statewide franchising is a way to just funnel more money to the large corporations and less to us. Yeah, is that happening? Yeah, yeah, Idaho just went statewide franchising. And they lost all their stations? They're going to, yep. Oh, no, Washington, is going to, they're planning on doing that or? Every year, every year, Comcast or Verizon or yeah. one of these others, yeah, yeah. If they they're If they're a cable provider, yeah, because they don't want to pay. They don't want the competition. This show, right, yeah. Your Daily Hour with me, competes with every other cable channel. We're competing with Letterman and Leno. Yeah, yeah. And, and Sunday Night Live. All of them, yep. Yep, all of them. And the idea is that they want people to pay. They want people's money. And if they're watching this show, this show doesn't have any commercials. Well, not ones that, you know, ask for money. But this show takes audiences away from paying customers. And yeah, they don't want that. Yeah, we're better. <laughs> we really are. We're better. And so what they do is they try and kill public access as best they can. And they do that through sneaky contracts with, you know, fuzzy writing. Uh -oh. So 
So, um, we talked about that at the conference and state of the affairs and what we need to do to get other funding other than cable funding, how to network and work together. And um, uh, for instance, uh, uh, cable companies and uh, network companies, like uh, companies that provide cable services and sometimes they're phone companies, uh, usually they're cable companies, um, they, they will funnel about $6 million to politicians overall Whoa. To, to get legislature written that helps them. Uh, the public access, the, the whole group, the uh, Alliance for Media, mm -hmm. for public media, uh, which is us, which TCTV belongs, we have one lobbyist yeah. in D.C., one, one wow. dude. One dude. <laughs> well, that's in D.C. We're in the state, right? We're trying to fight for the states. So we're just right <laughs> down right here in Olympia. Yeah. Yeah, but the lobbyist has to talk to our congressmen and our senators that are in D.C. when Congress is in session. When they come back home, then, yeah, they can talk to them while they're here. And it's up to local people to talk with them and convince them. All the them. senators? Yeah. Yeah, they all, have, uh, they all have numbers to call them. Uh, Kent we got Cantwell, Murray... Um, yeah. Last year we called the mayors. All we did is look up their names on the computer and we found them. We called them and then we got some of them on the show. And we could try to get our senators on here to try to promote public access. That was cool, man. That was really cool. We'll, we'll call some senators. How did, uh, uh, I, I don't, I don't recall. No, I didn't. I wasn't able to see all those shows that you did. Mm -hmm. Did they sound favorable to public access? Or did, did they just. I didn't ask you about public wah, access wah. as a political topic. Well, it might be it might be valuable because it's relevant. It's relevant yeah, to not the show. Yeah, mayor though, but yeah, I should call the uh, the those mayors. The people who are on here, they lost anyway, though. Yeah. Well, um, most of the time, the objection to public access is that people are showing stuff that uh, normal audiences would object to. Oh yeah. <coughs> sweary talk. We're you know. on here, but that's our. We have freedom of speech. Anybody who's trying to fight the. Uh, where he talks and the stuff they don't want to hear. Yeah. Well, people pay for cable. And so it's like you buy a magazine. If you buy a magazine and you read stuff that you object to, you really can't complain because you bought the magazine. Yeah. You know, you can't. Uh, you're, buying, you're buying us. That's right. You're paying for us. And uh, anyone that gets cable that watches this show, if they look at their bill, they'll notice they pay 50 cents. Right. My yeah. cable bill is 20 bucks. I get the lowest form of cable possible. Um, but most people pay about 50 because they get all the channels. They get like 70 or 80 channels. Yep. And pay channels or more if they want more or if they want, you know, Showtime or, or whatever. They pay a little bit more. But 50 bucks and 50 cents of that is the franchise fee. That's the fee that pays for the right of way use to bury their cables. And that goes to the cities of the county. So... So uh, uh, Comcast wants that 50 cents. Yeah. They want it. The, but right. They give it to you guys, to the station, yeah? Yeah, but they fight it tooth and nail every time there's a contract. They don't want to pay it, and they don't want the competition. So, you know, uh, if you think this show or shows like this are valuable, <laughs> if they're, you know, they're local, right? Yeah, we're, we're local. We're sitting on my couch. In, in my apartment. County, Olympia, Washington here. That's right. And uh, this is our stuff. We're, this show is not being beamed to you from some other city with writers and hosts and all this crap, and there's no commercials. This is local. This is, this is us. So it's important. And uh, uh, you know, sometimes stuff on it is you know, weird or uninteresting, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's our here, local though. voice. It's kind of like the uh, the uh, the op-eds in the newspaper. They're letters to the editor that are written by local people that live here in yeah. in the city, in the county, and that's local voice. And imagine the newspaper that says, "Oh, we don't want to hear from people that live here. We just want to feed you the stuff that we want to tell you." That would suck ass. Huge, huge monkeys asses. Local. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, so I went to the conference on Friday, and then Saturday was, were a series of speakers. Yeah. And uh, um, one, one presenter that I went to was at SCAN. And SCAN was killed 
uh, it was, mm -hmm, yeah, it was killed. Uh, a number of oh. things. Okay, I'll talk about scan. Everybody, check us out. Here we are. If you don't want those sauces? I will happily take them. You'll eat, eat them, them in the future. Oh yeah. All right, you can have them in the near future. You got ranch. Ooh, ooh, barbecue sauce. <laughs> yeah. Ranch. ranch. Oh, you went to Wendy's. Wendy's sweet and sour. Yeah. Oh yeah, that stuff's good. And yeah, we barbecue. got barbecue. What is barbecue? What is barbecue flavor supposed to taste like anyway? It's sugar. I know it's molasses. Molasses. Molasses should be the primary ingredient, but they don't add that to stuff like that. There's some in there. What's molasses? I never had that. Molasses? Ah, uh, molasses. Uh, you take sugar cane, and you you shred the sugar the sugar cane, and cook it, mm. and this thick, dark, dark syrupy stuff. The caramel kind of. Yeah, yeah. It's a dark caramelized stuff, and Further processing, you get white sugar, uh, but molasses is the is the first syrup. Mm, the barbecue sauce. Well, it's um, it's kind of bitter, and it's got a really strong sour bitter kind of kind of acrid kind of taste yeah, to it. Put sugar in it. Well, people don't like it. Kids don't like molasses because it's got a it's got a flavor that's not really nice. But it's really great in barbecue sauces and syrups. Okay. It just it makes it makes it just adds a complexity. And uh, uh, molasses has all kinds of vitamins and shit. But Probably not barbecue sauce though. Maybe a little bit. Well, mostly barbecue sauces. Uh, sugar. Yep, sugar and vinegar. Vinegar is a big component. Like I in this, for instance, the barbecue sauce, the first ingredient is high fructose corn syrup, which is awful. Tomato paste, which is a common ingredient. That's pretty good. Tomatoes. Water. Distilled white vinegar. Yeah, that's a big one. And this does has, oh my god, this does have molasses. Wow. Holy crap. This is good. It's natural. This is good. Yes, you should eat the Wendy's barbecue sauce. Just open it up. Don't order anything. Say, I want your barbecue sauce. Yeah. It has molasses in it. But it doesn't see it doesn't say what the ratios of the ingredients are, so Yeah, probably not that much. Probably most almost yes. all, probably eighty percent sugar. Well yeah, yeah. Yeah, could have an eyedropper full for all we know. Yeah. Okay, so so I went to a conference and there was a guy from Scan who was doing a show called uh, Ask an Atheist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, it was a live call-in show, and people would call and talk about atheism. They would talk about uh, religion, and uh, most of the time, he did a show every Sunday. Most of the time, some highly religious person would call and say, God loves you, yeah, and stuff. You know, all the, all the, all the usual suspects, all the, all the regular stuff. And when Scan closed, uh, due to uh, a series of unfortunate circumstances, um, what happened? Well, uh, Scan, there were two or three different producers that were producing really objectionable stuff. Yeah, and then... So not objectionable to a small amount of people, but for most people, it was highly objectionable. Yeah. And that didn't help the love of Scan. People did not like Scan because they were showing gross things, right? Mm. Uh, genital piercing. 
Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, really light porn. Whoa, what? So, you know... Uh, Is yeah. That copyrighted stuff, or how did they get? They had the uh, there was a guy who had uh, all kinds of old porn from the 70s and 80s. That w- it was. And he would knit different snippets together, little so the clips. So it wasn't copyrighted. Oh, it was all copyrighted. So then he should have been shut down. Then instead, I mean, that's that's something you're not supposed to be doing. He should have. He should have, but he wasn't. No one. He did. He never got a la- letter from any. Uh, company saying cease and desist, and that's what Scan needed to shut the guy down. But uh, they would go to meetings and stuff, and he would scream and yell, I got my free speech rights! Yeah, that's not part of free speech. If you're showing copyright material, that's a different law. Yeah, yeah, agreed. But it never happened. And so so Scan was not viewed favorably by the community because of that. He was smoking weed right yeah that was another one that's what i heard about i heard that guy he, that was was he would on the show his show was he was smoke weed and watch porn right yeah and then talk about it but he'd be like oh i've got this illegal substance so he was trying to yeah just like uh, that's trying to push yeah i mean we can cuss and stuff on this show but i try not to push things just for just for pushing sake that's what well just to make a point like. yeah, yeah he was doing stuff just to make a point and it was unnecessary and it didn't help his cause it didn't help scan and it eventually it was part of the demise and then some joker came and the the scan was up for contract renewal and they were getting like you know a quarter of a million dollars to do their thing and mm-hmm. he c- he came up and he says i can do it for a hundred grand yeah and everyone just you know shit their pants because uh it's not possible and so the contract went up for a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars and the dude that said he could do it didn't get the contract because oh, no. he, he, yeah it was full of crap and so it went to some little outfit that is uh can't do much of anything because they really don't have enough money to do much of anything a hundred thousand sounds like a lot but you got to pay a bunch of people and let's say you pay uh Three people, uh, twenty-five thousand dollars a year. That's seventy-five thousand. Yep. Yeah. And then, what do you got for rent? What do you got for power? What do you got for equipment? So maybe you can pay two or three people a really tiny part-time income, and then you got money to get new cameras or pay for the lights or rent. Yeah. So, so that's so nothing there. <coughs> um, they've got a little small something. It's barely, barely creeping along. And there's like three people. That's all that's there. And they are fighting for trying to get funding elsewhere, trying to get support. And it's a different name. It's like Seattle Community Media or something. Oh. So. But TCD, I think TCTV is still doing pretty good, though, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, my boss, uh, Deb, she's great. Yeah. She's smart. Uh, she's resourceful. She knows a lot of people. And uh, she she's she's good. Running so. along. Thanks, TCTV, for keeping us on the air here. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess we could speak of free speech. We could check some messages. i got to go over here and check the messages today, though. Okay, hold on. Hold on. What? I think we're okay. It's okay. I'm, o- I'm over here. You can still, I can still talk. You can still hear me, but you can't see me. But I'm about over here checking the voicemails. Okay, you can see me, though. The first so one's from Dan Dobler. Okay, Dan Dan Dobler is making phone calls and taking names. Oh, where is it? Dan, you can call him back. Bye. Oh, Dan wants to call him back. Okay, so we'll call Dan back at some point. Hi, Katie. This is Dan Dobler. This is Dan. You can call him back. Oh, yeah, Bye. Dan Dobler, because he knows that there's you, too. The other Dan. So he knows it's uh, Monday Dan? Uh, maybe that's why he says Dan Dobler, yeah. So here, I'm logging into the thing. We're going to call Dan Dobler. I got my scale back. I'm very happy. Here he goes. Oh, whoa, yeah, it does the the double thing, huh? Yeah, it sounds really pretty, actually. (laughs) Coming from multiple sides of the room. Yeah. Well, I found the win of my phone and I'm uh, it's taken me a couple of days I'm programming all the numbers into it and then at some point I'll take out the battery and toss the other phone would you get it from a uh, good ball no no uh, bought the f- phone set like years ago the double 
Yeah, it came with a it came with a spare. Oh, you had to pull it out. Well, I finally found it. I knew it was somewhere. But when I moved to this apartment, I lost it. Oh, oh. Hey, halfway through the program, the next dice game. Hi, you reached the cell phone of Dan Dobler. Please leave a message at the beep. Thanks. Hi. Hey, Dan, it's the program. Hey, Dan, it's the other Dan. Calling Dan from Monday, Dan. Yeah, you call us back. We're going to play the dice game soon here. Yeah, let's roll the dice. Bye, Dan. All right, roll the dice. Yeah. We're playing for the outside the outside number, not the inside number. So far, me and Dan already have one point. Now it's a five. We lost this round, but we already won. So, I mean, when you pick the same numbers... Wait, what's the inside? Oh, the inside is a one. Oh, it's a one. You know, it could be a double chance. Yeah. Be twice the odds. Could be. The game. The yeah, game. I know, I know, but uh, one wonders. One wonders. So maybe if the inside dice is the number, then maybe you're just a little lucky. You know, it's a little dice. You're a little lucky. Yellow, the guy that likes to talk about yellow things, he says, you should talk about yellow birthright companions on the show. Yellow birthright companions? Yeah, what does that mean? Uh, birthright. We're calling Mr. Yellowfellow back here. Yellow birthright companions? Yeah, I don't think it means anything. This guy likes to call in this say gibberish to try and throw, throw us through a loop. See the one we called and he just he wouldn't answer the questions and he Yeah, he doesn't want to answer. He, he likes to make funny breathing noises and <laughs> like this. See? Hey, how you doing? Hey, this is the program. We're calling in you. They talk about yellow things. No, he just likes to call in. He likes to make these breathing noises, but he know we're you know we're calling you every day. <laughs> I mean lately anyway. But is he's not gonna say he's just gonna breathe or say something obscene. Is he pretending to cry? Is that what's going I on? I think <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's what he's doing this today. Yeah, he's doing some crazy things. How you doing today, yellow fellow? Oh, is something wrong? Are you are you crying yellow tears? Is it is your dog okay? No. No, what happened? He, he just died. Oh no! I think I I just made that up. Are you stuck at the Walmart? Yeah. Remember that one person I was stuck at Walmart? Yeah. I, how did your dog die? <laughs> Cancer. Cancer? Oh man, that's subversive. And I love him. You love him? No, because 9-11. 9-11? Your dog died in 9-11? That's subversive too. Yeah, so he's just trying to... He's one of these... No, no, wait, wait, wait. Your dog died because of 9-11? Got cancer by way <laughs> of 9-11? Is that what you're saying? Uh, hello? Yeah, I think he hung up. Yeah, yellow fellow, he's an actor, huh? Yeah. Well, you know what? When... When a person is always playing games, essentially, yeah. then at some point when it's real, they are not going to be trusted or believed. Yeah. That's the problem pay playing games. Yeah, you look out, yellow fellow. Yeah, yeah. Here's Dan Dobler again. Hi, Katie. This is Dan Dobler. This oh, is Dan. Back here, yeah. Hi, Dan. <laughs> Dan Hi, Dobler. Uh, uh, I didn't oh, we can see you back there. So awesome. I, okay. uh, I was so tired. You can call me back, bye. We're going to try to call him back. He didn't answer, though. Yeah. He's he's busy doing stuff. He saw the Three Stooges movie. He said it was bad. Do you like the Three Stooges, Dan? Uh, no, not really. They're making a new one, though. Yeah, there it is. It's on the theaters. Oh, it yeah, is? Dan's favorite. It's your best friend, Dan. Here it is. This is a long message. Guess who? Mr. Ginsu. Well, my I'm best friend. Yep, yep. Didn't really turn out like I thought it was going to be, but she is fucking deep now, eh? So, yep, yep. 
That's all I can say. I don't fucking know. But I found her. I talked to her. What'd you find? She said she'd stop by and see me someday whenever she comes back to Washington. What, your daughter? No. And we only had like a two minute conversation. He found his and estranged she daughter. She had to go. She was getting a little bit upset, I think, on the phone. So. Oh, wow. Fuck, what happened? I don't fucking know. I have two daughters. Yes, I guess he's looking for his daughter. Shit, really, that with me, but whatever. It is. It was a uh, fucking. Uh, it's not my deal. And then I probably did something. I might have shut it off a little bit. Accidentally. But fuck. I don't get a whole lot of fucking communication skills around here. Especially not talking to you, motherfuckers. What? <laughs> fucking. So, whatever. That's the end of the story. I found her. I bought a computer and I found her. You bought a computer? 30 minutes later. 30, within 30 minutes, I have a computer. I have found her. So wow. That's it's cool. It's all fucking pretty much done. Pretty much done deal. Uh, don't need to frickin' do that no more. Don't need to search. But he got a computer out of the deal. The I don't need to fucking do that no more. Cause fucking... Yes? What? I don't know. It was pretty just a fucking pointing, but... Just a fucking pointing? I'm sure pointin'? <laughs> knowing she's all right. So I might have, after I get past all that bullshit, she's all right. All right. All right. She went hitchhiking at 16. She's been hitchhiking, huh? Left the state. Fuck the hell off. Huh? <laughs> all right, that was the message. Mr. Gitsu found his estranged daughter. Hey, did you hear about Desmond? What? He, uh, um... His nose and cheeks were broken. Oh, he's scheduled for the program tomorrow. Yeah, well, I saw a picture, uh, and, uh, oh, he does not look good. Oh, man, we'll call him. We'll call him pretty soon here. Yeah, totally. I'd like to find out what the hell happened. Hi, this is David from the 10 Minute Show, and I'm wondering if I could come on the show on Wednesday. Uh, I realize that the show that you record on Wednesday may not actually air on Wednesday. I believe you're like seven days out. But I was thinking, I had this idea, I'd come on Wednesday, uh, do the show, unless you have something already planned, and also simultaneously videotape using my own camera, uh, 10 minutes of that hour would be that week's Thursday's episode of the 10 minute show. So, uh, and that would air this Thursday. Um, I'm thinking we could do this almost any time. It doesn't have to be this Wednesday, but it just happen to have this minutes. Wednesday free. Yeah, and I also don't have a show, show for Thursday. Well, I have a couple different shows for Thursday, but I'd be more excited to do this. Call me back, 701 uh, yeah, 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 yeah. If you've got something happening. If not, I would love to be your your guest, and I'd love to have you as my guest. So it would be like simultaneously <laughs> guesting, hosting. Wow, um, that is amazing. You choose anywhere you choose. Probably where it's more convenient for you because I'm fairly mobile. Um, imagine you are too. I look forward to hearing from you, either Freddie or, um, ooh, I'm blanking on <laughs> the gentleman's name who also works on the show, but I, I wrote down uh, Freddie's number. Can we? I believe this is like a TV TV number. One of them. Okay, well, in, uh, lastly, and most importantly, I hope that you're able to somehow use this wonderful voice now that I'm leaving you oh, yeah. for production purposes because, uh, you know, that's what it's all about. about. Produce, produce, produce. Always be producing. Oh, yeah. Well, we can call this guy back. Yeah. Is this David? Yeah. David. Do you know David? No, I don't. But uh, this is, this is, uh, Kenny, I think this is a spinoff. I think you're, you're, you're show? His own show? It's like the show? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, he may not have the resources that you do, but he wants to do 10-minute things. I, I have resources. Well, apparently you are a muse to other would-be producers. All right. Well, here, let's call this guy. His name is David. He wants to come on Wednesday. There's nobody scheduled for Wednesday, so that's a good, uh... What's happening there? Do you have a mic on your computer? Uh, no. I'd have to plug it in, though. Okay. I think we got to...
There it goes. I would have to set it up. Uh-oh, oh, it's time for commercial break. Uh-oh. Maybe we shouldn't answer this one. All of our time. Immerse internet. Our computer monitor becomes an extension of our consciousness. Our computer monitor becomes an extension of our consciousness. We act like it's not true, but it is. You. You start to realize it becomes harder and harder to function. Dan's over there. What are you getting another drink? Dan's making himself another drink. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm walking over here behind the lamp. You can see me back here. I'm gonna call this David guy again. Well, what's happening? Is you, are you eating? Is that David? Wait, what? What's happening? Uh oh. Wait, we're trying to call David, and we gotta call David now. Oh, is it going? We're having pro pro a little problem now. Off. On. Off. Okay, I think it'll be working now. I think it should work now. We're gonna call the guy. Here it goes. Uh oh. Yeah, that's not right either. Calling the David guy back. What are you what you drinking there, Dan? What you got a martini? No, it's uh, vodka and orange juice. Screwdriver. And soda. Some Honic soda? Uh no, it's uh, stevia soda. It's called uh, Zevia. <laughs> and it's, it adds a little citrus sweetness that uh, has no sugar, so I can do that. Hello, David? Hello, David? Tone, please oh. record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang really up devil? and press 1 for more options. Hey, David, it's the program. It's Monday. Monday, Dan, talking to you. Yeah, my name is Rick. You can call us back. Uh, you can come on Wednesday. We have no time to be scheduled for Wednesday. So if you give us a call, we'll call you back, talk to you tomorrow. Uh, yeah, Wednesday is a good day. Okay, bye. All right, that was David. That's almost all the messages. We, maybe we got a few more messages. And then we'll call Desmond. Oh, we got two more from Mr. Gintu. I think we should call Freddie and Desmond, though, because uh, you know, Freddie's the producer, and then Desmond is supposed to be here tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Desmond uh, had an altercation either with a unmoving object or possibly a moving object or a person. You think he got in a fight? I don't know. It looked pretty Ooh. bad. Did he go back to work anyway? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't talked to him or anything since. I just saw a picture. Oh, we'll call him next after Freddy. Oh, hey, it's Daily Hour. Yeah, hey, Freddy. How you doing? Doing good. How are you? Uh, we're doing just fine. We're at Dan's here. Ooh, nice. Hey, Freddy. Hey, Hello. Freddy, how you, you doing? Dan? So, you had a long day today? Oh, well, yeah. I worked at, I worked at uh, Santa Ana City, and then uh, me and Dan went to Seattle and hung out in Seattle, and then I uh, drove back, and uh, now I'm home relaxing. We're about to watch Mad Men. Great. How's that production then coming? Coming good. Um, I just captured Wednesday's episode. Um, gotta make. I, I think I need to queue up the um, uh, the commercial, but everything is going good. So success. Great. What happened? Yeah, and and YouTube is looking good what? too. Hey, Freddie. 
Uh, what, what happened to Desmond? He, uh, his face is broken. Did he get a fight? In. How did that happen? Um, the story, as far as I know it, is that he was uh, play fighting with a friend of his, and then the friend was play hitting at him to hit him in the ear or something, and then Desmond turned his head, and uh, both his cheeks and his nose are broken. Oh, Man. that is that is some that is some kind of rough play fighting. That's what I'm saying. Don't play fight. You know, it's a bad idea. you ja I mean, the the best thing that could happen is that you end the fight and no one's hurt, and and that's like maybe unlikely. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk to him. He's scheduled for tomorrow. I'm gonna try to call him next. Yeah, I'm having. I tried to call him a couple of bits like last two days. Haven't really been able to make it through. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, I saw the picture on the Facebook and. His yeah. face is pretty messed up, you know. He yeah. looks like shit. No, yeah, no. Well, hopefully, he does. hopefully he can call us back because uh, otherwise we don't have anybody scheduled to, for tomorrow. Okay, well, yeah, try to get a hold of him and, you know, wish him the best. I hope he's, I hope he's doing good. Yeah, really. Okay, well, thanks, Freddie. Yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, there he goes. Now we'll call Desmond next. See, where's my, let's see, where's the, uh, my phone, or my, uh, what's this thing called, the iPod, iPod or phone, so I got this one's phone number, you don't know where it is? Uh, I, Maybe uh, it's in my car. Yeah, I'm gonna go check my car, you can, you, you talk about something, man. Okay, okay, I will talk about something. Okay, so I'll just finish the thing about the conference. So, on Friday... Uh, went and talked about public access in general, and then Saturday was a series of... Uh, on Saturday, it was a series of uh, seminars, and this, this, uh, this atheist group, they lost their ability to be on the TV station, so they ended up doing a radio show. And the guy talked about all the things that he had to do to be able to do a show on a radio on a radio show and how they had to uh, 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 get enough money and sponsors to be able to pay for the equipment they needed to do the show and make it sound good and sound decent and not sound crappy and so uh, the guy was really resourceful and he talked about that so uh, that was really interesting there was another guy uh, that that I watched and he does interviews and he talked at length about his methodology for doing interviews with people and how um, uh, he, um, if you remember James Fry who wrote this book called A Million Pieces or A Million Little Pieces. And Desmond, yeah. Okay, well, I'll finish that. Well, you can tell him while ring in. Okay, so, so he wrote this book, bullshit in the book, and uh, uh, had put him on her book of the month club or book of the week club and she lying? yeah yeah she caught him lying and so she confronted him and it was really awful and this guy I forget his name uh, Gerald Gerald I think that's his first name he's in Seattle he does a show on PBS hey, reached out and sorry I couldn't get to the phone leave me a message and I'll get back to you as quick as I can see ya at the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. To leave a callback number, press 5. Hey, Desmond, it's the program. Hey, uh, we uh, talked to Freddie and, and we saw your picture on, on uh, Facebook and <laughs> you got your face broken. Dude, call us back. Let us know. Yeah, you know, we, we care. You're scheduled. Yeah, speak for I, mean, I care, but speak for yourself anyway. <laughs> We're scheduled for tomorrow. I care. Yeah, I care too. <laughs> separate, separate care. <laughs> so we we're, we're, uh, you're scheduled for tomorrow though. So call us back. Uh, you can come on if you need your face is broken. I don't know. Maybe you can wear a mask if you think you look weird or something. Uh, yeah, but call us back. Okay, bye. Yeah, yeah. thanks. I do that wee thing, and yeah. and I'm sorry for that. I just it's kind of automatic. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, dude, I met another Canadian there. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. He says sorry the same way I do. <laughs> exactly the same way. It was so funny. People were just laughing. And and uh, his name is Rob, right? 
Yeah. And I said, Rob, can you say I'm sorry to so and so? And he's like, What? 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 Why would I do that? I'm like, Just say that. Just just say the words. It's not that you're apologizing. Just say the words. And he's like, I'm sorry. And <laughs> he's <laughs> <laughs> laughing because. <laughs> That's no, I Canadian said thing, yeah. Yeah, he's from Toronto. I'm from Edmonton, and yeah. they're on the opposite sides of the country. But and yet we say, "I'm sorry," the same way. I'm sorry, eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we didn't say a. Eh, yeah. But you know, we said out and about in the boat. The boot in the boot. Out in the boat in the boot. Yeah. So that that's fun. Uh, we, he wasn't doing public access too. Mm-hmm. Did you guys yeah. have the same job? Pardon? Did you guys have the same job? No, no. He's in charge. Oh. He's the director of the this little startup thing that he's been working on. So, so yeah, um, it, it was just funny to meet a fellow dual citizen that has the same freaking accents as I do. Yeah, all right. Well, we have two more messages from Mr. Ginsu who left us two more, and then they will call McDonald's, and that will probably be most of the show. Oh, also, Danny, you passed out yesterday or something? Mm. We want to hear about that, too. Okay, as you're doing your thing. <coughs> anyway, so uh, I listened to these seminars and stuff like that, and at the McMinimins, the Edgefield in Portland, they have what is called a warming pool. And it's this long, windy pool with little fountains and little fiery things, and the pool is 80 degrees. It's like, it's not a sauna, but it's really warm, and you, you just float around, and it's got chlorine and salt in it. So Whoa. there's no bacteria. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because bacteria can't live in the salt and like the chlorine. What about, oh, yeah, and the chlorine, yeah. So I floated around, and it was pretty funny and, and met a lot of people, and it was really nice. It was a really nice place. And the interesting thing is the rooms don't have televisions. What? Yeah, there's no TVs. What do you do in the there's room, no then? Uh, you read a book. What? You know. they got to get some TVs. I'm not going to any hotel without a TV. Oh, you just, you d well, what it is is you don't stay in your room. You're in your room to sleep. Oh, yeah. Right, or if you're with someone to smooch on them or something, you know. <laughs> Will you need TV for that too, though, right? No, you don't. <laughs> no, you <laughs> don't need TV for that. <laughs> and so it's like when you're finally exhausted for the day, then you come and you crash in your bed. But it's really nice. It's really rustic, and there's art everywhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everywhere there's art. There's you can't all kinds of art you have everywhere. To, you have to have a TV to sleep, too. I mean, you just can't. Mm. I, I I sleep on the TV on it, I guess. I don't. I don't. I know a lot of younger people like your age that uh, they have the TV on and it's, and it's like white noise. Yep. But I didn't grow up with that. And so uh, I have a CD player in the bedroom and I play like ocean waves or uh, alpha and beta wave music. And it has rhythms that are alpha waves and beta <coughs> waves. And it's really ah. nice. All right, well, this is the last couple messages from Mr. Ginsu. We haven't heard from him in a while, so we can hear from him today. Okay, yeah, we only got like uh, five, uh, ten uh, minutes. This is a long fucking time ago. No. You motherfucking shit. <laughs> I, I can fucking just see it now, fucking next to you. Hey, Mr. Ginsu, leave us a message. Motherfucker. <laughs> Here's wait fucking till I get on my computer and I fucking contact you so that you can give me your fucking address. Then I'm gonna come down there and maybe just kick your ass in your fucking cut. Get all fucking. Uh, okay. Fucking. <laughs> God damn it, what the fuck? Good word. Oh, I'm fucking hell down on fucking nothing right now. <laughs> fucking. I can't tell. He said Freddy. 
Enunciate. He was commenting on Freddy. We got one more. One more? Okay, so last night. Hey, can you answer me? What, yeah? Is he talking yet? Oh, yeah, we can play it. Any more time before it picks out? Or can you adjust that or, uh, you know? And the fucking gold and that fucker's name like five or six fucking times. Fuck the hell off, motherfucker. What the fuck? You smart enough to set the ringtone? Why don't you make a new ringtone? Fuck. What are you doing with yourself, fucker? I come out here to pitch at you for something. Oh. Yeah, are you, are you fucking doing the show today? You're working, motherfucker. You gonna call me back or what? Fuck. You calling back? You're, you're weak. Uh, uh, do you want to hear about my story? If we talk to him, we may not have time. What time are you fucking gonna do? Uh, show? yeah, you have to hear the story. Oh, well, well, yeah, well, yeah. Donald. But you can tell the story while the, the thing Fuck. is ringing. Okay. So last night. Don't make uh, me come down there. Uh, what? Yeah, well, last night I'm finished. He, he wants to swear some more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's the story? You passed out? Yeah. Yeah. I was uh, sitting. Uh, it was like two in the morning. And uh, all of a sudden, I got this terrible, terrible pain. Uh, uh, Hi, Donald. Oh, Alan McDonald. Uh huh. May I help you? Yeah. Do you guys have those orange milkshakes right now? The what? The orange milkshake, like Arctic orange. Oh. Maybe I called them in the past. Maybe they heard, but yeah, okay. You called a McDonald. That was important. Yeah, okay, yeah. So let's hear this. Okay, so, so I'm sitting there, and I got this terrible, terrible pain in my intestines, in, in like, right behind my belly button, in between my kidneys, and it was this... this you got appendicitis, huh? Well, appendicitis is a little bit more localized. Okay. And so it was hurting really, really, really bad, and, uh, um... It was just this terrible, oh, thank you, that's better. It was this terrible pain, and it was not a stabbing pain, it was more like a, a knot or whatever. You know how, uh, and this is kind of gross, but I don't care. Um, uh, you know the feeling that you get right before you have diarrhea? Ooh. Yeah, it's gross, I know, but, uh, but it's, I'm talking about the feeling you get. It's this, this, this churning thing, and it's really, really mm -hmm. uncomfortable. Yeah, mm -hmm. one minute left. Uh, or when you have bad gas or whatever, when you're, you're uh -huh. something's going on. So it was a pain like that, but it was really intense, and it's like, oh, God. And so I turned in my chair, and uh, I was, like, going to crawl on the ground because I was getting lightheaded. Yeah. And uh, boom, I passed out. Whoa. And what happened <laughs> is uh, I used my face for brakes again. Yeah. And uh, I got this rug burn. I don't oh. know if you can see it. I got a rug burn on my forehead. Yeah. still kind of hurts. And because uh, I hit face first and I woke up, I was kind of on my side Whoa. and uh, uh, the pain was gone. I don't know how long I was out, um, but I, I, I fainted. I passed out. Whoa. And uh, I got up. I uh, checked everything. No broken anything. No nothing. And it was like that. Well, that was weird. <laughs> so I was scared that you just went to sleep after that. <laughs> well, shut out the lights and got the coffee ready for the next morning and everything. And yeah, and then I went. And this morning, I post on Facebook, oh, I passed out and shit and blah, blah, blah. And then 20 people, go to the doctor. Go to the doctor. Yeah, I, go to the doctor. doctor. I did. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. What'd they say? Took an EKG. My heart's okay. Electronic. Oh, that's where the heart rhythm. Electronic. Really the Electronic. Cardiogram. Electrocardiogram. Oh, yeah. I knew it. Yeah. Hey, thanks everybody. Uh, yeah, well, thanks for watching the we show. Got, we didn't even get to hear the story. Wait, well, next Monday, I'll talk, if we remember, I'll tell you more about it. Thanks, crew. But I'm okay for now. No cancer. No, no one could be cancer. I'm no viewers. Yeah, I could. I don't have a chance. Yeah, the Zabby back up in your phone face yeah. CCTV. Well, because I live alone, uh, I'm not it's smart right. enough to go see the doctor by myself, right? Hell yeah, so Don. Yeah, so if I, if, if I lived with someone, they would say, get your ass to the doctor, damn you. And I would say, okay, honey, I will. But, nope. 
If you pass out, you know, call the number. Don't call the doctor first. You should call the <laughs> number first. Well, call both. Bye-bye. Call us first. Because, you know, we're important shit. <laughs>